Back in August I published a video analyzing the history behind Jack Sparrow, and challenged you guys to make historically accurate versions of the character. Since then I've gotten a few submissions sent to me, so let's take a look and see what has been made, and the interesting inspirations that went into these designs. I will make some commentary on inaccuracies, it's not really to critique the artists as much to get an opportunity to discuss history, and possibly clear out some common misconceptions. First one to send me a picture was Rapolio, who appears to have photoshopped several images together into an interesting vision of Jack Sparrow. Starting from the top, he appears to wear a black felt hat with the brim folded to the side, and a red band wrapped around the crown. The style of hat was popular in the 16 and early 1700s, and remained so for the rest of the century. He also appears to be wearing a silk bandana, quite fancy, possibly LARPing as a gentleman. His hair is also quite interesting. It must have been quite long, and he has plaited it into several braids. His beard has also been plated with a nice little ribbon, how Blackbeards was described. He appears to have an ascot or neckerchief tied around his neck. He's wearing two layers of cloth, which appears appropriate for the tropical climate. His first layer consists of a white shirt, and then a brown frock upon it. He's wearing three different belts slung over his shirt, and wears the coat over them. I don't know why he doesn't wear them over the coat, which appears to have been more common. He has a blue silk band with a leather belt on top. The belt has two holsters with pistols in them. I think this is an interpretation of the pirate fashion, in which a pirate would keep a silk sling around his chest, and either attach pistols to it, or tie it around a pistol handle. Later on we'll see some interesting interpretations of this fashion. To my knowledge, holsters like these were only worn on saddles until the 1840s, when they appeared on personal belts, and even then, it appears like many just kept tucking their pistols into their belts, like before. Simple ring holsters were illustrated on pirates in the period, and also implements like the one Rapoli is using. But these illustrations come from an unreliable source, and have as of yet not been corroborated by any other written, illustrative or archaeological source. Recently the Widow Museum came out and said that the pistol with the silk sling was discovered inside of a holster made from hemp, not leather, which is very interesting. I took a look at the holster and I've discussed it with a few people, and opinions are mixed. The holster has been greatly deformed, so it's uncertain what its original shape was, and may simply have been a bag. It opens up some room for speculation, but I'll save the holster discussion for a video on pistols, coming out next year. He has a cartridge box and a pouch, slung from a leather belt, which, yeah, was very popular with soldiers, and something pirates would certainly have done. He also has a powder horn for priming his pistol and musket. It's a very nice detail. Around his waist he is wearing a sash, the sash has the tie up front, which appears to be how it was worn in the period. For some reason he has a belt upon it. Belts in this period weren't used for holding up your pants, but for holding implements, like a cartridge box or sword sheath. This jack does have a sword, but it's not clear where he keeps it, so maybe he just tucks it into his belt, but that would damage the belt over time. And yeah, he's wielding a cutlass and a musket, a good choice of weaponry though the stock on the firearm doesn't look like anything from the early 18th century. Finally, he's wearing a regular pair of period trousers, tied at the knees, a pair of white socks, and buckled shoes. Overall a fresh and interesting design, though I'd consider the pistol holsters and take a second look at where he keeps his sword. Moving on to Piotr's illustration. In his email he provided some reasoning for his portrayal, and some source material behind his inspirations. So let's take a look. He says that the depiction turned out like an average pirate, which yeah, it, it's probably close to what most of them might have looked like, apart from the bandana. Bandanas were definitely worn, and Piotr provided a few examples, but it wasn't popular fashion. He also decided to equip his jack with a sleeveless waistcoat, or vest. During the period, most waistcoats had sleeves, and they are more so the progenitor of the modern suit jacket. Then again, sleeveless waistcoats do appear in the period and Piotr provided a few examples. It should be noted that period waistcoats always appear to have reached halfway down the thigh, the sword Jack Sparrow wears in the movie. He has the same silk sling as Rapolio's, but without holsters. Instead, the pistols seem attached to the sling, but I'm not entirely sure how. Compared to the previous Jack, he has untied breeches, meaning he gets more ventilation in the tropics. Very nice detail. And Piotr decided to omit the socks, calling them too hot. 
And that could definitely be reasoned, but at the same time, uh, socks are kind of good for preventing sweating in the shoes, which can get excessive if you're not wearing socks. Interestingly, the shoes have raised heels, which were a fashion statement especially common with the upper classes. For weaponry, Piotr decided to give him a musketoon, essentially a carbine musket. Piotr also drew a close-up of Jack's face. He's got the P for pirate branded on his forehead, another reason for him to wear the bandana. His hair is tied into a single braid. Finally, Piotr drew a body image of Jack, giving him native tattoos from Madagascar. I think Piotr based it on the idea of the POTC story being more fitting for the Indian Ocean rather than the Caribbean. It's very interesting. He also gave him some combat wounds from the movies. Overall, a very interesting and creative design. It would be cool to see you color it, though the pistols are a bit weird. Next we have a submission from Unknown Trooper, uh, one of my Discord jannies. He's made a lot of design choices similar to the previous two, with a few departures. Apart from a small goatee, he doesn't have a beard, only a mustache, and he appears to wear a crude, flat-crowned tricorn hat. It looks like he folded it himself, which is quite interesting. Also looks like he's got a syphilis scar on the nose. Interestingly, Unknown decided to give Jack a striped neckerchief and a checkered shirt, both of which, the latter especially, were quite common. He wears a waistcoat, same as Piotr's, but this one is actually sleeved. As you can see, the lower sleeves have buttons. This style dates back to the late Middle Ages, and you can see it today on suit jackets. He wears a silk sling like the previous two, and here we actually see the pistols attached to it via belt hooks, which is normally how they were secured to belts. However, I think belt hooks sat kind of loosely and even then, over time they would have slipped down to his waist. They wouldn't have stayed up like this all the time. He wears a belt around his waist, and has a cartridge box and a cutlass sheath attached to it. The belt seems to be kept a bit too high, upon the navel it seems, which would have impeded breathing and movement. It's best to keep belts like these below the navel, right under your stomach, and upon the hip bones. He's also got a third pistol tucked in his belt on the right side. If you want to grab it with your left hand, it would have been unwieldy to reach. It's optimal for grabbing it with your right hand, but that's his sword arm, which is why pirates seem to have had the pistol on the right side instead, for grabbing it with their left hand. There's a lot of cool minor details in the drawing, like this missing button, and his clothing being patched in several places. He also seems to have a syphilis scar on his lower legs. Really makes you wonder what kind of stuff he's into. Overall, Good design, nice attention to detail, it's mostly a few of the placements which are weird, which can be hard to notice. Next we have a Jack Sparrow from Monstery, who actually colored his. Very nice. Monstery did several versions, I decided to go with the colored one for the sake of variation. In terms of clothing, he largely went with the same decisions as the previous artists, with a few exceptions. He's got a hat with the brim folded on the front and back, and a sash both tied and patterned in the French manner. He's got a black spot on his neck to cover a syphilis scar. And around his neck, he's got three pieces of eight, fashioned into a necklace. I don't know where he got the inspiration for this from, but the idea is very interesting, and pirates and sailors could keep money like this on their person. Finally, Monster decided to call his sparrow, John Tai. Maybe pronounced Teague. I'm not sure. Monster also did an interesting variant, where Sparrow can be seen with his favorite prostitute, Scarlet. She can be seen smoking a pipe, which women often did, and Jack himself is now wearing a neckerchief, and a large tricorn hat flipped backwards, which is how sailors usually wore them. Moving on to Joseph Clark's rendition, who was also so kind as to provide a description in his email. Joseph did a few things different from the others. He gave John Teague, as he named Jack Sparrow, shoulder-length curly hair, topped by a French-style knit stocking cap, which was certainly worn by French sailors. It's a very interesting addition. Joseph based it on some bits of dialogue, where Jack shows interest in French culture. We can also see the pistols tied to the silk sling, and they have correctly fallen down to the waist. Otherwise, there's not really anything different to comment on. Maybe the lack of buttons on the lower part of the waistcoat. Finally, Joseph placed John's brand in the center of his hand, in accordance with how the East India Company branded pirates, on the forehead or in the hand. Again, nice and simple, with some fresh and creative additions. Super Barbarous also made a variant similar to the other ones, with a few interesting changes. He gave Jack a small hat, which looks either like a Monmouth cap or a barge cap, a sort of brimmed headpiece. Not sure which. 
The waistcoat or vest looks a bit anachronistic, lacking buttons, and also being too short for something from the period. The belt looks very realistic. The sort worn by pirates and sailors were usually of such a small size, though again, the cartridge box is much too small. Interestingly, Super Bobber's Jack is wearing a pair of checkered petticoat breeches above his trousers. He intended for these to replace the sash. It does actually seem like sailors wore their petticoat breeches in this way on occasion. Again, very interesting addition. The trousers below are quite interesting. They're very baggy, more akin to something worn by Hollanders. Actively Random presents a version of Jack Sparrow with some very good shade work. Again, he largely went with the same design decisions as the previous artists, brand on the forehead, black spot over his syphilis mark, more accurate braids, pistol in a silk sling, two layers of cloth, shoes and stockings. The hat is different, he is wearing a small tricorn instead, which were common with sailors in the 1730s, but they usually had the back forward. The frock coat appears horizontally striped, maybe it's the shading, interesting either way. He's got his cutlass just tucked into the belt without a sheath, which I think would have cut and worn out the belt over time, especially the interior, which is softer and more vulnerable. Finally, he wears an interesting pair of breeches. They're not very long, but not short enough either, and are also very wide. Perfect for rounding off, we have this minimalistic design sent in by Eli Green. It's just Jack in a shirt, sash, breeches, and sockless shoes. The hair appears quite accurate, tied back in period fashion. The cutlass seems entirely fantastical, however, mostly in terms of the handle. The image is meant to be cartoony, so the blade is unrealistically oversized. But the blade seems a bit too straight for period cutlasses, which were usually a bit curved. Again, thank you to everyone who sent me their artwork. You definitely provided me with enough material to make a video and raise some interesting points. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned something new. I might do one of these art challenges in the future after I've made a video on Barbosa, but there might not actually be a need for it, because Barbosa's outfit seems pretty accurate, apart from a few minor details and the fact that it's old fashioned by the 1720s. But that's for then. As usual, thank you to my generous supporters over on Patreon. Patreon supporters get early access to my videos and can watch them without ads. And if you want to interact with fellow pirate enthusiasts, check out the link to our Discord server in the video description. Cheerio!